Welcome back and thank you for watching videos from Henco Water Jet Supply. In this video today we are going to watch how to reassemble a flow intensifier. You may also want to watch some of our previous videos including how to disassemble the intensifier, how to rebuild a check valve, and also how to redo a high pressure cylinder for flow, and then also how to redo the center section for flow. All right, let's jump in and get started with the uh, assembly of the intensifier. We're going to go ahead and take, in this case, the right-hand end bell and attach it to the flow stand. We're going to want to go ahead and grab an Allen wrench and snug up the uh, bolts. All right, next we're going to go ahead and grab the center section that we've rebuilt and carefully guiding the plunger, making sure not to damage the oil seal that we put in, and gently slide the plunger through the end bell. And as you get to the end, you're going to want to put a little bit of effort into this, and the low pressure cylinder should snap over the O-rings onto the end bell. If needed, go ahead and grab a rubber mallet and give it a little bit of a tap. Once you get it over the seals, it should go on quite easily. We're going to go ahead and grab the other end bell, and again, we're going to very carefully guide that into the end bell as to not to damage the rod seal. And go ahead and press the end bell to the low pressure cylinder using the rubber mallet if needed to get the low pressure cylinder over the seals. All right, once attached, let's go ahead and take our other set of screws and attach this side of the intensifier to the workbench for the next step. Let's go ahead and grab our tie rods with one nut attached on one side. Go ahead and slide all four through as shown here. All right, in the next step, let's go ahead and grab uh, the four nuts that are required here and hand thread on as tight as we can. All right, in the next step, we're going to go ahead and use two inch and a sixteenth wrenches and bring the nuts to as tight as we can get them. Once all four nuts are secure, we're going to move on to the next step, which is utilizing a torque wrench to go ahead and do the final assembly of the center section. Utilizing the torque wrench, we're going to apply 120 foot-pounds in a four-step process to the center section. It's going to be important to follow these torque specs or this torque pattern while using the torque wrench. And the first step we're going to want to go as low as your torque wrench can go, which for most torque wrenches is going to be set at 20 foot-pounds. In step two, we like to go to about 30% of the value, which is 120 foot-pounds, in which case is going to be about 40 foot-pounds. In step three, we go to 60%, which is 75 foot-pounds. And then in the final step, the fourth step, we're going to go ahead and go to the full 120 foot-pounds. And again, remember to follow the torque pattern. All right, we're going to go ahead and fast forward here through all the different steps so you don't have to watch us uh, going through all the different uh, torque sizes and patterns. Uh, but an important step is at the end uh, when you are done uh, torquing down the center section to remember to go ahead and turn back the dial on the torque wrench all the way as low as it goes. Uh, it just improves the longevity and the health of your torque wrench. All right, now that we're done with the center section, let's uh, keep moving forward. We're going to go ahead and work with the high pressure cylinders. We're going to start with the flat side of the cylinder facing up. Go ahead and take the washer and set that on top of the flat side. And let's take the retaining cap and thread that all the way down as shown here. All right, before we go ahead and put in the cylinder, we're going to start with the bronze backup. As you can see here, we're going to start with the uh, weep hole facing downward. And you go ahead and slide that in. And at this point, we're going to go ahead and take our cylinder and begin to apply blue goop to it. All right, a good trick to avoid getting blue goop all over your uh, fingers and looking like a smurf is to go ahead and just to apply a straight line on the threads of the cylinder as shown here. Uh, and as you go ahead and thread in the cylinder, that blue lubricant is going to uh, pass itself along and coat all of the threads. All right, an important note is you're going to put on the high pressure cylinders. You just want to be careful as you're guiding the cylinder over the plunger and engaging the cylinder into the hydraulic end cap is to not, you know, smash those first threads on either the end bell or the cylinder. So just kind of be gentle, make sure that you get the thread started gently and uh, go ahead and thread on as you see here. Continue threading on the cylinder until you can't uh, thread on anymore. Uh, 
using no tools, just hand tight. All right, once the cylinder is on, we're going to go ahead and unthread the cylinder cap and the washer from the cylinder. And once those are off, we can go ahead and repeat uh, the same steps we just did and install the other cylinder on the other side. All right, so one of the reasons that we use the washer with the uh, cap is so that once you go ahead and try to install that cylinder onto the plunger, uh, as you're doing that, you don't go ahead and push the seals out of the cylinder. It uh, holds everything in there nice and tight. All right, once we get the retaining cap on the cylinder, we're going to go ahead and grab our bronze backup with the weep hole facing downwards or toward the south side. Go ahead and slide that on the plunger for now. All right, let's go ahead and apply blue goop uh, as before on the threads and go ahead and install the cylinder as described before. All right, so far we've got the center section put together with both high pressure cylinders attached to the end belt. All right, next we're going to go ahead and attach the high pressure end or the static end of the intensifier which includes the check valves and the high pressure end caps. All right at this stage to begin with we're going to be working with blue goop. Uh, might be a good idea to get a little tiny paintbrush as shown here. And we're going to start by applying blue goop to the back side of the check valve. Once you've got the blue goop evenly uh, spread out on the back side of the check valve we can go ahead and install that check valve into the high pressure end cap as shown here. And you're going to use the two thumb technique and go ahead and kind of snap that into place, making sure that both O-rings are securely seated. All right, next we're going to go ahead and apply a small amount of blue goop to the flat face of the cylinder as shown here. And then also do the uh, exposed threads with the line of blue goop as we did on the other side. All right, with the uh, brush that we have, let's go ahead and, uh, as you can see here, spread out some of the blue goop on the face of the cylinder, basically trying to apply blue goop where the face of the check valve is going to come in contact with the cylinder. All right, once we're done with our blue goop, we can go ahead and grab our high pressure end cap with the check valve installed. And again, we want to be careful here as to not damage those first threads, but go ahead and guide uh, that end cap onto the cylinder and begin threading in. All right, and just like the cylinder with the high pressure end cap, uh, we're going to want to go ahead and thread this on um, as far as we can with our hands, utilizing no tools at this point. So basically hand tight. All right, now we're going to go ahead and use our tools. Uh, this is known as a knuckle wrench. You want to go ahead and apply this to each cylinder as shown here. And once you get it on uh, tightly and you've engaged with the cylinder, uh, you don't want to go ahead and torque on this too much. You just want to go ahead and give it a little bit of a snug pull, pretty much a quarter or an eighth of a turn, and that's all you need to get that cylinder tight. Moving on to the end cap, we're going to go ahead and use a spanner wrench. Uh, use the two pins and engage with the end cap. Go ahead and turn this end cap until you get it uh, snug, and then once snug, we're going to go ahead, just like we did with the cylinder, and move it to about an eighth or a quarter turn uh, past hand tight. All right, we're almost done. The final step is to go ahead and finish up the assembly of the check valve. Here you can see we've got the high pressure seat. You're going to want to take the side that has the chamfer on it and apply blue goop to that face as that is the face that's going to come in contact with the inside of the check valve. All right, once you've got enough blue goop on the face, you can go ahead and use a pick, your fingers, whatever works well for you, and insert the seat into the cavity as shown here. Next step, go ahead and grab your output adapter uh, with your spring. Place the spring inside the cavity as seen here. You can take your high pressure poppet with the flat side facing up. Go ahead and give uh, the high pressure poppet a few uh, pushes. Make sure that it moves freely with the spring and thread into the end of the check valve. You've got the output adapter hand tight. Go ahead and grab your two inch and a quarter wrenches and tighten the output adapter to the check valve as you would any other high pressure connection. All right, we are officially done with one side of the high pressure intensifier. Let's go ahead and work on the other side. Right, we're gonna begin by applying the blue goop to the back side of the check valve like we did on the other side. And go ahead and place the check valve inside of the high pressure end cap. 
And like we did on the other side, we're going to go and apply a blue goop to the flat face of the cylinder as well as the threads. Avoid getting your hands uh, full of blue goop at this point. And grab the high pressure end cap with the check valve. And again, be careful threading that on to the cylinder and go ahead and get that nice and hand tight. Next, let's get the knuckle wrench attached that to the cylinder. And again, doing about an eighth to a quarter of a turn to get that tight. Then we're going to utilize our spanner wrench and go ahead and make sure that we get that end cap tight to the cylinder. And in the last step, we're going to go ahead and grab the output adapter with the spring and the output poppet, attach everything, and again with our two wrenches, go ahead and torque down as you would any other high pressure connection. And that is it, folks. Uh, we have successfully disassembled and rebuilt a flow intensifier. A sincere thank you from all of us at Henco for you watching our videos. Uh, at Henco, you'll find we love helping customers and talking water jet. If there's anything you can do, give us a call or visit www.hencowaterjet.com.